All right, so I'm going to need to start with the labs. Let me bring that up first. So um, this is what the lab looks like. All right, so um, there are large variations in the average monthly temperatures among cities located at the same latitude. Remember, lat is flat. So same latitude would get the same amount, duration, intensity of insulation or incoming solar radiation or sunlight. So in theory, everything at the same latitude should have the same temperatures, but they don't. So there are some variations. There are some other things that, that tie into the climate that change that. So if you haven't done the notes for climate yet, I would recommend doing that ahead of the lab because it'll help a lot with the questions. Um, so that's just, if you haven't done the notes, they don't take that long, but they'll help you give some background. So the idea again is that everything at the same latitude should have the same climate but they don't because there's other factors besides the latitude that tie into climate. So latitude's part of what affects climate, but it's not everything. All right, so um, the point of the lab is it's a graphing lab, so I wanna work on that skill because going forward, whether it's professionally in other, or in other classes, like graphing is an important part of science and in general, showing data, I use it all the time when I do my private weather forecasting too. So it's a skill that I want to practice since we have some time. So you're going to graph the average monthly temperatures of coastal and inland continental regions. So we're going to do that part today. And then tomorrow, if you need help with the discussion questions, we'll talk about interpreting those temperature ranges and how it all ties together. So to start off, don't forget to do your vocabulary. If you can't type right into the document, you can do it on loose leaf and you can just like list, you know, do temperature range, write the vocabulary, like definition there. Um, but you don't have to like write everything out again. You can just write like the answers, basically like an answer sheet on a piece of loose leaf. Just make it clear what you're doing so that I can follow along. So start with your vocabulary. The thing that I want to point out with the vocabulary is the last word is insulation. Insulation. The insulation, this in this case, is incoming solar radiation or sunlight. So that's the definition of that. Insulation, like what you find in the attic, like the pink stuff with fiberglass in it, is spelled differently. So this isn't talking about like the stuff that keeps your house warm. This is talking about incoming solar radiation or sunlight. So just be careful when you're defining that word. All right, so your first step um, for the graph is to go to the website, uh, weatherbase.com. And I went there today actually to get the data myself. Um, I didn't get the data for um, all the months for each place, but I went through May. Um, and I'll bring that up in a second on my side sheet. So you can either type it into the graph or like I just recreated a piece, like the chart on a piece of paper um, and you can do it that way. So either way works. Uh, what you'll notice when you go to the website is there's a search bar at the top. You just type in the location. You might have to go through a couple of pages of it. Um, but the very top row is the average monthly temperature. So you're writing that down for each month for each location. Um, so that's step number one is to get the data. Then step number two is to graph and you can graph either um, on a plain sheet of paper or using Excel. So I'm going to start with the plain sheet of paper method just because if you try Excel and you're having a really hard time with it, you can always go back to the blank piece of paper um, and do that way instead. Um, so that's our focus for today. Tomorrow I'll get into the discussion question. So we're going to keep it all on the data part. So let me um, stop sharing this one and bring up my document camera so that you can see. Let me see. I might have timed out here. I know we're so good. Just give me one second. All right, so I'm just gonna bring up like the data that I have. Um, again, I didn't do it for all the months. I just did it for, um, for the first five. Let's zoom in a little bit here. So if you're, Playing along at home, you can get some free data here. Again, it's not complete, but you can at least get a start on it. Um, you'll have to go to the website to get the rest of it. So again, I um, went to the website on the top of the lab. You just click on it. It's an active link, or you can just type it into your um, search engine. And type in the location. I noticed for a couple of locations, um, New York, New York, and um, it might have been Los Angeles. I had to click through some places first um, and go through a few pages, but you'll find, make sure you're using the specific locations though. So this is free data. If you want to start filling in your data chart or writing down these numbers, feel free to do so. Um, so um, this is the data chart. You can write it right into it or type it right into the document. That's fine. But if you're doing it by hand, you can set up a chart like this. Um, 
I ran out of room if I were to go all the way through, but make sure you go all the way through to December. All right, so you're doing for the full year. So that's why I have the arrows at the end. Um, but I just wanted to do this for sake of example. All right, so um, we have the locations there. We have New York, New York, which is a coastal location. It's on the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and you can see the average temperatures there slowly increase from January, February, March, April, and May, and then continues on in the summer, and then it'll start to get colder during the fall and winter. For Bismarck, that's North Dakota, that's known as landlocked. Landlocked means it's surrounded completely by land. Um, so you don't have like large bodies of water there like the Atlantic Ocean. Um, talking about on a larger scale, there might be some like lake effect heating, like that moderation, right? So if you're on a large body of water, you have cooler summers and warmer winters, so it makes your temperatures less dramatic. But for Bismarck, it's completely surrounded by land. So that means it's gonna heat and cool a lot faster than something that's like coastal or on a large body of water. Um, LA is my abbreviation for Los Angeles. Los Angeles is coastal, it's on the Pacific Ocean. Um, and you'll notice that those temperatures are pretty close together, right? In January, it's 57.3, but in May, it only goes up like a handful of degrees, a little bit more to 64.7. So it gets warmer in um, the Northern Hemisphere summer when we're tilting towards the sun. Um, so it gets warmer in like May, June, July, August, but you're no not noticing as big of a jump as if you look at like Bismarck goes from 12.8 to 55.5 in the same amount of time. Um, Phoenix, Arizona is also landlocked. Okay, so that's gonna come into play later. That's why I'm going over that part. So New York and Los Angeles are coastal. Bismarck and Phoenix are um, landlocked or surrounded by land or in the middle of a continent. Alice Springs is in Australia. And what you'll notice with Australia is it's in the Southern Hemisphere. So when it's our summertime, it's their winter time, right? May is 60 degrees out of all the numbers I have there for Alice Springs, that's the coldest temperature. But in our winter time, it's their summer because the Southern axis, the South Pole is pointing towards the sun. So they have um, more intense sunlight. So remember that the seasons, like where it's summer here, it's winter in the Southern Hemisphere and vice versa. And then the last location's unknown. Um, and I'll have some questions about that one in a minute. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I set up the graph by hand first, and then I'll show you how you can do it in Excel um, for those of you that wanna give that a try. Um, I know like going into college, I wish I had more practice with Excel because that's how we did a lot of our data um, at, in college was through Excel, and I didn't really have a background in it, and it would have been helpful. So let me just scooch this so you can see what I did. Okay, so if you're using a blank piece of paper, you can just draw axes, right? If you're using line paper, um, if you can, if you want to like use the lines to help with a scale, you can. Um, my x-axis is the months. You can just use like the first letters. You don't have to write out the three letters, but I, I do this, I do that just because like March and May and June and July, for example. Um, but if you did J, F, M, A, M, J, J, I would get it. All right, so whatever works best for you. So months is along the x-axis, and then temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, make sure you have the units there, um, would be your y-axis. And then it's not perfect, right? But I just tried to evenly space it out. And based on the data that I had collected, the highest temperature I had had was um, in the mid 80s. Um, so I went up to 90 on mine. Okay, so from there, now if you're doing this in Excel, it's gonna be a little bit different because they're gonna color code for you. Um, but if you're doing it by hand, if you have colored pencils, I'm grabbing mine, you can use those. Um, if you don't have colored pencils, it's fine. You can just use like different symbols, like a triangle for Los Angeles or a square for New York or a circle for Bismarck. You can just use a different like, um, symbol. I'm going to do both, I think, just so I can show both ways. Or I can use like a highlighter to go over the colors later. Um, just have some way to distinguish because we're going to have a lot of lines on one graph. Right, so um, I'm going to start off, I'm gonna make New York, you can do whatever you want um, as far as your code goes. So I'm gonna use this kind of orange color. I'm gonna use orange circles for New York. So again, I'm not gonna do all of these because it'll take a long time. I'm just gonna do a few to get you started. Okay, so for New York um, in January, the average temperature is 32.9. So go to January approximate where 32.9 is and I'm just I'm using orange circles for mine if you just want to use color and make a dot there that's fine if you just want to use symbols if you don't have color stuff at home that's fine too 
February is 35.5, so I'm just going to go a little bit higher. Okay, March is 42.2. April is 52.7. And May is 65.5, 62.5, sorry, 62.5. All right, now, I would want to continue on, make sure you go through the end of the year because we're noticing an increase, which makes sense because we're going from um, winter into spring and then it would go into summer and fall. You don't have to use a ruler. It doesn't have to be that exact. You can just use any straight edge. So ruler is not necessary or you can connect by hand if you want. But again, make sure you continue on from there, okay? So I'm just going through May just for the sake of time um, because it'd be tedious to do all of it. All right, so then for my next one, I'm gonna do Bismarck. So I'm just gonna do a few of these lines just so you get the hang of it. So I'll do New York, Bismarck, and Los Angeles. And then um, that should give you a general idea of what your graph will look like. And then I'll show what it looks like on Excel. So for Bismarck, um, again, you can use shapes, you can use color, any way that you can like distinguish um, between the locations. And if you wanna just make a key off to the side, you can do it that way too, if you don't wanna put it in the data chart. All right, so for Bismarck in January, it's 12.8. So January, 12.8 would be around here. Okay, February would be 18.1. March would be 29.9. April, 43.8. May. It's 55.5, okay? So you'll notice that the temperature increases at a faster rate in Bismarck. So it's starting at a lower temperature, that's true, but as far as how fast it is, it has a steeper slope, right? My lines are a lot steeper. So Bismarck heats up a lot faster than New York because it's landlocked and land heats faster than water. So it's gonna take longer for New York because it's on the Atlantic Ocean, so the Atlantic Ocean stays cooler into the summertime. Um, so it also keeps the land cooler because the um, water is cooler. All right, I'll do one more, just so you can see sort of the trend here. Um, we'll do LA, so I'm gonna use a green triangle for that. Again, whatever method works best for you for keeping the difference, okay? Um, so for LA, January, is 57.3. Um, February is 58.5. Oh, March is around 60. Okay. April is 62.2. May. 64.7, so I'm trying to keep it really gradual while still showing that up, but it's, the change isn't much, and I'm not using graph paper, so I can't get super exact, but you get the idea there that it is warming up slightly as we go towards Northern Hemisphere summer, and Southern Hemisphere winter, um, but the change is less dramatic than with Bismarck, and New York and Bismarck are at a latitude farther north than LA, so because LA is farther south, that does come into play, it's closer to the equator, so it's gonna stay warmer um, overall. Okay, so that's how you do it by hand. You would continue on and you would do Phoenix, Alice Springs, and Unknown as well um, in the same sort of way. So when you're done, you're going to have um, six different plots on January and six different plots on February and so on. Okay, so it takes a little bit of time to do it, but once you get in the hang of it, like I already did you know, a good number of it already in you know, about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, so once you get in the, sort of the groove of it, it's not too bad. Um, so I made the due date on this assignment at the uh, end of the month, so it gives you a little bit extra time to get it done, but that's like a firm deadline to make sure you have that in on time. I'm not taking late on it, um, but I did give you an extended amount of time to get it done because I, I know sometimes graphing can take some time. All right, so let me switch gears here and show you how to do the graph in Excel. So this is by hand. If you start with Excel, I think Excel, it's like super easy once you get in the groove of it. Um, so I would prefer to do it that way, but if you get stuck on the Excel part and you wanna do it by hand, you can always go to by hand. So I wanted to start with that way. So let me stop the share and I'm going to switch over to um, Excel. 
Okay. Um, and if you don't have Excel, no big deal. You don't have to use Excel. Um, and if you're not going to use Excel, if you're just going to do the graph by hand and you want to log off at this point, feel free to do that. If you have any questions, I'll feel free to hang on the line and I'll answer them for you. Um, so for Excel, what I did is I put the, um, the months across the top. So if you're following along at home, you can type that into while we're going over it. And then down the side would be your locations. So New York, Bismarck, um, LA, Phoenix, Alice Springs, unknown. Okay, so you start there. And then you type in your numbers. So 30, I'm just gonna go down the line because it's just easier for me to hit enter. But I'm just hitting in the data from the data chart. Um, let's see. I think you could also, you know, copy and paste this from your data chart once you write it in. So it's like whatever works best for you. Uh, let's see. I figured it was uh, good for me to type this in by hand anyway, so that if you're trying to get some free data, it'll give you a little uh, time to do so. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go out to May for all of them. Just so you can see, but it's actually kind of cool. Like I haven't played too much with Excel either. So this has been really good for me um, because it's given me a chance to sort of work with some new technology and um, platforms um, to expand my own knowledge base. So, uh, and if you get stuck on directions too, you can always come back to the video or I did post a, a tutorial, like a, a sheet with directions with like print screens on the assignment. And actually that's what I use to refresh my memory on how to do this as well. Okay. All right, last column here. All right, so this part is a little bit tedious. Um, Again, I think you probably could copy and paste in off the data chart, which would make life a lot easier. Um, but all you have to do, right, and again, you'd want all the numbers typed in. So, yeah, I can expand this out a little bit. So make sure you go all the way to December. I just, again, for the sake of time and space, abbreviated it. Once you have all of your data in, all you do is you highlight that entire area. So you just do this gray box. I actually went a little past there, so let me just redo that. Okay, so you highlight from the top A1 down to unknown and then across all the way to December and it'll be in a gray box. Your next step is to go to insert, all right? And then if you look over towards the middle here, we have these lines. So this is a bar graph, all right? So we're not gonna do a bar graph with this one. You wanna do a line graph. So if you click on it, you have all these different line options and I'm just gonna pick the first one. And that's my data chart. Quick and easy, right? So the tedious part is getting the numbers in, but once it's in, you just have to highlight the area and I can actually, you know, I can make it bigger so it's a little bit clearer, right? And what you can do is you can copy and paste that chart into your lab or you can just attach it as a separate piece of work. It's up to you. Um, you can change your format too if you wanna like, like this one's cool because it gives like numbers that go along with it. You know, you can pick a format that you like um, whatever, there's some cool ones on here. I like the ones that have the numbers, but you don't have to do it that way. Um, but that's exactly what we did by hand. It looks very, very similar actually to what we had done previously. Um, and you'll notice along the bottom, it has the months going across the bottom and it's highlighted with the color for the code, right? So blue is New York, orange is Bismarck, LA is gray, Alice Springs is blue. So it color codes it for you, um, which makes it nice and easy also. All right, again, just make sure you go all the way to December for all of them so you can see the trend throughout the entire year. So um, 